Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I've got two replays in the Polish tier 10 heavy tank, the 60TP Lewandowski Go. And this is the top of the Polish heavy tank tree. It's a big hitting Polish heavy tank. It's got 750 alpha on it. The mobility for a super heavy tank is pretty damn decent at 35 kilometers an hour and you do tend to hit that really. It's got a nice set of gun depression at 8 degrees which is really really nice on this turret. It means that you can go hull down in a fair few places and you'll bounce a lot of shots off this turret. It's one of those tanks with slightly weird armour where the lower plate is obviously a weak spot but it's really well angled so there's a lot of times where you might actually bounce a shot that you didn't quite expect and the upper plate is one of those again that bounces a lot but occasionally will just get penned and you sit there going how? What? Why? Reasons RNG is probably the way to put it. But the 60 TP is a pretty damn nice tank to play. Like I say, it hits hard. It's almost like a slightly better version of the E100 in a way, just in the fact that it's got that nice hard hitting gun. It's got pretty damn decent armor. It's got pretty good gun depression. So you can use it in a lot of different situations. I think for me, really, one of the only real weaknesses of the 60 TP is the fact that the gun reload is a little bit slow for 750. But apart from that, it is a pretty nice tank to play. I do enjoy playing this tank when I do take it out. I do enjoy the gun. I enjoy the armor. It's just a pretty fun tank all around. And it's got a good face. Look at his face with the googly eyes. But anyway, googly eyes aside. What do I run in terms of a crew on the 60 TP? Well, in terms of a crew, I run Born Leader, Rapid Reload, Six Sense, Situational Awareness, Steady Aim, Snapshot, Run and Gun, Trap Mechanic, and Rapid Aim. Rapid Aim to be able to get this track track no to get this turret on target as quick as possible because the turret traverse is pretty slow being a super heavy tank track mechanic because you do get stuck in brawling and it's nice to get your tracks back on as quickly as you humanly can do all the gun perks to make sure that this gun is as good as possible because it can be a little bit derpy at times because it does have base accuracy of 0.39 and a three second aim time and you've just seen it with the 705 lower plate where we basically had the lower plate of the 705 and it just went hat lol and only did track damage so yeah, I try to make it as good as humanly possible in that regard. And then in terms of equipment, I run the advanced loader, the vertical stabilizers, or the gun stabilizer, and optics. Optics to be able to spot for myself because you do have 390 meters view range, so it's nice to get that view range up as high as possible. Gun stabilizers to make the gun, again, as good as possible on turning the turret and on movement. And the advanced loader to make the DPM as good as you can get it to. So yeah, you can see in this first game so far, we are on Fjords, we've got 3.2k damage after just setting that 705 on fire, and we've got a AVRE in front of us, who naturally doesn't really have to pen us to do any damage, which is always a bit sad for us, because it'll do a lot of damage just splashing, it's usually about 600 damage to us while splashing, so we're having to be very, very careful, he pulls around the corner, I go, okay, you know what, let's pop a big shot into him, he's fired at us, we fire at him, he's really fairly similar to me as well which is you know always the thing so he splashes for about 600 odd damage and we did him for 738 or whatever and i decide okay i'm going to move up to the next rock so that i'm closer to this avre and i can sort of skirt around it try and get behind the marat and whatever that's around this corner so that we can basically get the team below to progress and get shots into the back of the AVRE. So the AVRE fires and ends up killing the tortoise. My driving is great. We get tracked by the artillery, which is always fantastic in the perfect place. Now we're loaded. We're going to try and get the shot into this AVRE so that at least he's a one shot for our friends. We get the shot straight through his turret. We're floundering a bit into the rock. It's like, oh no, no, no. And we get extremely lucky. <laughs> doesn't kill us with the sp he should have killed us every time there and we get very very lucky that he didn't actually kill us out. i think he hit the end of my barrel which means that you know it splashed at a good range away from my tank so he didn't take any damage whatsoever it's either that or he i have no idea what i hit other than it could have just it should have been the end of my barrel we got very very lucky to be alive but we take the rough with the smooth round here we're at 4.7k damage just looking for a shell into the side of this type 4 heavy turret we can't quite see him where he was we were getting little outlines there he is try and get the shot in there to the type 4 but well he's clearly not in a position that we could actually shoot him even though we could just about see him so we're going to try and help our friends up north where there's a couple of the tanks that were spotted left so there's a Type 4's just been shut down. There's four tanks left. Three of them are spotted up in this northern area. So we're going to try and get up north to help the two heavy tanks that are pulling back. And this is where we can get hull down on this little ridge. 
and try and stick some big alpha shells into these guys. So the type, type, T-58 Heavy pulls out, gives us a nice shot into the side of his tank, and we shut him down. Now the Object 268 version 5 is trying to poke out to get shots into our friends, so we're just keeping back so that he doesn't randomly pen us. If he's firing heat, well, he's got very, very high pen heat, and sometimes that can go straight through the front of this turret, and if it goes through the turret cheeks of this tank, you will probably get Amaract, which has happened a couple of times. It's only the extremely high pen guns that can do that, like the 268 version 5, like the E4 with APCR, like Yag Panzer E100 heat rounds, you know, that can go through the turret cheeks of this thing. It has to be like near 400 pen, you know. That's that's how good the turret face is. But you've just you've got to be careful about what you're facing. And like I say, that that can happen. So we're trying to get a shot into the side of the IS4. We make sure that we're getting the shot in. We actually managed to shut down that IS4, which is nice. Now there's only two tanks left on the team. There's the Murat there that's spotted and that version 5 that was around the corner. We do have heat loaded because we had it loaded for the IS4 because the standard pen on the 60TP at 250 can actually struggle at times with an IS4. So we needed the, the extra heat pen that this gets at... 317 to make sure that we we're going through his upper plate or lower plate but we didn't need it for the 268 version 5's cupola but we slapped it in anyway and we shut down the 268 version 5 finished with 5 kills 6.3k damage the ace tanker 1659 base xp really nice game for the polish tier 10 heavy tank the 60 tp and again that that brewer showed what it's decent for getting stuck in getting brawling keep trading those big alpha shots into the enemy team and you will have a good time. You can hold a corner pretty decently with it. If you side scrape better than I did, for the most part, I was still driving around my lower plate covered, but he well, not covered, showing, but it is what it is. Now we're on to the second replay. And the second replay is Abby, and that is a lot of big guns. There's 4,005, two ruthless, E4. This could be painful. This, this, this could be painful but you know we're gonna go attack the heavy tank flank on abby anyway if you are on abby the best brawling flank for heavy tanks is to go down this one two line because you've got two different avenues where there's a lot of cover a lot of places you can side scrape get your lower plate covered go hold down that sort of good stuff so we're going to push down here to see if we can basically push to d1 because there's a dead wreck at d1 where we can get hold down we can Basically, they'll only be able to see our turret, and we can shoot across and spot the people that cross along the G12 area as they climb up to the, you know, along to that air, two line area. So you can actually get good shots across from here, good early shots. You don't want to hang around for too long, or it depends on where they attack. So here's the dead wreck, and as we're coming along, there's the 780, object 780. We get a shot towards his lower plate, but it bounces. 250 pen on a 780 in the lower plate might be a bit of a struggle. It's not always going to go through that lower plate. I'm probably better shooting underneath the 780 because I'll actually overmatch his underside. And that's one thing that you can actually do when you're shooting at object 780. There's like, if you're shooting ever so slightly up, you can actually hit the underside and overmatch it quite consistently sometimes. So we're going to pull out, get a shot through this, well, try and get a shot into this Ruthless, but we end up tracking it in place, and the Panzer. I was just looking what the TD was behind me, so I was trying to make sure not to block his shot, and the Panzer slapped that <laughs> Ruthless for a 1,000 because we tracked it. Beautiful scenes. We had loaded the heat for the 780. We didn't need it for the Ruthless, but it is what it is. Now we've got the lower plate, that 780. We miss. We hit the, the ridge line in front, but we're using this rock. Not rock. We're using this dead wreck to good effect. It's absolutely perfect for the 60 TP because we can basically just hide our hull and our lower plate and keep poking over, have shots straight over it and get shots into stuff like this E4. So we get the first shot of damage so far in the game, 788 damage into that E4. The 780 pokes around and misses a shot. I'm trying to see if we can get the shell loaded in to, do it, to get another shot into that guy, but I can't. The E4 gives us his cupola again. Um, you know, we can't pen the E4 cupola with 250 pens, so again, the heat is perfectly needed for an E4 cupola, especially since they overbuffed it massively ages ago. So we just keep whittling that guy down. That guy has a big gun. We don't want to take a hit from the E4 if we can help it. And if we can shut that guy down, great. We go for a shot into the lower plate, the 780 there with heat. And unfortunately, that was an extreme angle. So basically, that's why it bounced. Because with heat, we shouldn't be going through that lower plate. But just the way he was really awkwardly angled there against the rock, that made it very, very difficult for that shell to even have a chance to go through. Now he's angled a bit more weirdly. 
we're going for that shot through the lower plate again, and there we go. It goes straight through that time. And that one was me going, how did that one pen, but the first one didn't? Oh, you know, cause, as you do. But we did manage to finally pen it. We damaged his fuel tanks, because that's what happens with the 780. Now we've got a flat on lower plate shot. We damaged the fuel tanks again, and it clearly sets him on fire. But he's got a fire extinguisher, so he puts it out instantly. He's now within the range of us, well, range of a one shot for us. We're just waiting for the shell to come in. He's given us the perfect shot into that lower plate, and we low roll. Because of course we do, which leaves him on 37 hit points. We load the HE so we can only have to splash the 780. The 780 actually penders there somehow, some way, but the Ruthless bounces its AP round. So we've actually blocked 5.3k damage so far. You can see that track. We could see the track of the 780, which means we fired the HE straight into the track of that 780 so that we only have to splash it to death. We just wanted to get that gun out of the game. Now we've got another Ruthless in front of us, and I'm like, please don't splash me with HE. And he fires AP, so he bounces. It's like, thank you, Mr. Ruthless. Good night, sir. Good night, sweet prince. Good night. And that Ruthless is gone. Now comes the next contender. It's another Ruthless. Hello, Mr. Ruthless. Please, again, don't fire HE at me, because that would be my counter right now. We slap the shot through his lower plate. He fires AP at us, and we bounce it off our turret front, because like I say, the turret front on this 60 TP is fantastic. If you can keep the hull covered and only give the turret, it's going to be a difficult time for the enemy team. We go for the Capola there of the M47 Iron Arnie. We get the shot straight in. We're being very, very careful again because we, we don't want to sit still, though, for the Ruthless because it still has a good penetrating AP round. And if we make it easy for him, he might still be able to hit because there is a Capola on the... There is a Capola on the 60TP, which can be penned if you're not careful. So you just need to make it as hard as possible for the enemy tank to pen you. So that's what we're doing. The M47 actually fires a heat round at us and misses. The Ruthless has done the right thing in dropping back. Well, the right thing would be to splash in us with HE, but he's pulled back, which he's done. We've loaded the heat rounds again because the heat round, it, the Ruthless does have an E4 Capola and, well, E4 Capolas, we can't pen it with AP. But that Ruthless is running away. But Just as I'm looking to get the shell in, the Iron Arnie pulled around the corner, but we focused on getting rid of that Ruthless's gun as opposed to just shooting the Iron Arnie because you just need to get rid of that 183mm gun. And that's what we've done. Now we're going in on the Iron Arnie, just being careful of the, I think it's the E4 on the corner there because we don't want him to come around and drop an APCR around in. There's now the Iron Arnie is a one shot, going for the Capola of the Iron Arnie, and we slap the shot straight through his Capola, shutting him down. We're up to 6,800 damage with 1,000 assistance, 8,000 of 50 blocks damage. We've blocked a lot. We've brawled in this game and we're now trying to flank round behind this heavy tank with the 268. Just chasing more damage and some more kills because you never know, a top gun might happen somewhere. So we get up behind the E4, slap the shot in, and finish him off. Now there's the KV4 left on the enemy team, but if I'm honest, I don't think. Oh, well, you never know. Actually, I might be able to kill this, this KV4 now. I'm thinking of the next tank essentially right here. So I move past the KV-4, slap the shot in to finish him off, and then my my thought was, okay, I can take the hit from the KV-4, and we can just keep moving. We can move over here, and we might get a shot towards the TD. My, originally, I was thinking I'm not going to get a kill on the KV-4, because the, the 268 has way better DPM than me. But fortunately for me, and unfortunately for him, the 268 got shut down. I finished the game with the victory. Six kills, 7.7k damage, 1,000 assistance, 8,050 blocks. Ace tanker, the high caliber, the top gun, the steel wall, 1,902 base XP. A really great game for the 60TP, which is a really damn nice tank to play. It's got some solid strengths. It hits hard. It's, yeah, I just, I do like the 60TP. I do need to play it more than I do. So as always, everybody, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. You're great success.